Hi guys, good day, it's me, Teacher MJ. Our topic for today class is all about solve board problems involving the volume of rectangular pyramid. So without further ado, let's do this topic. So I will give you four examples class for you to really understand this one. So this will be the formula class in finding the volume of the pyramid. So we have volume of pyramid is equal to one third multiplied by the area of the base. Once again, that's this capital B stands for the area of the base times the height. Or you can also apply this formula, the volume of pyramid is equal to one-third times the length times the width times the height. Once again, test this two formula because it's just the same. So you can either choose this first formula or the second formula. Once again, test if you have given area of the base and you have given height, simply use the first formula. If you have given length, width, and height, use the second formula. Alright, so let's start with example number one. Find the volume of a rectangular pyramid if the base length is 10 inches and the base width is 6 inches and the height of the pyramid is 14 inches. Once again, plus if you're dealing with problem solving, the first thing that you need to do is you need to understand the problem. Now, once you understand the problem class, you will write down the given for you to be guided. Alright, so we have given... Given length, that is 10 inches. Base length, that is 10 inches. And then we have given base width, that is 6 inches. So width, that would be 6 inches. And the height of the pyramid, that is 14 inches. And then we can illustrate this. For better understanding, you can illustrate this one. So we have a rectangular pyramid. Alright, and the height. Okay, the height of this given rectangular pyramid, that is 14 inches. Alright, so we have given length that is 10 inches and then the width that is 6 inches and then this height. So our given height is 14 inches. This will be 14 inches. Alright, so we have given length, width, and height. So therefore, we will be using the second formula. So simply apply the second formula. So volume equals, copy one third. Then our length is 10 inches, so 10 inches multiplied by the width, that is 6 inches. Once again, plus if you have variables close to each other, it means multiplication. Length times width times height. Alright, and then the height, that is 14 inches. Alright, so volume equals, so simply multiply the numerator. So 1 times 10 times 6 times 14. You can put over 1 plus, that's okay. Because any number understood that there's 1 there for the denominator. So simply multiply the numerators, 1 times 10 times 6 times 14. Alright, so let's multiply. So we can ignore 1 plus because 1 times 10, the answer is still 10. So simply ignore 1. So we just simply multiply 10, 6, and then 14. So 10 times 6 times 14, the answer is 840. So this will be 840. And then inches times inches times inches. Once again, because if they have the same base, simply copy the units, copy the base. And then understood plus that the exponent there is 1. Understood that there is 1 here for the exponent. So simply add the exponent 1 plus 1 plus 1. So therefore, the answer that would be inches cubed or that would be cubic inches. Okay, once again, because if you're multiplying inches times inches times inches, simply copy the units, copy inches. And then you add exponent 1 plus 1 plus 1, that is 3. So therefore, there would be cubic inches. Alright, and then do not forget plus, we still have divide 3. So multiply the denominators 3 times 1 times 1 times 1. The answer is still 3. And then simply divide. So 840 cubic inches divided by 3. Divide 3, the answer is 280 cubic inches. That's it plus. That's the answer for number 1 plus. Easy as that plus for number 1. Alright, so let's have another example class, example number 2. Alright, so let's proceed now to example number 2. What is the volume of a rectangular pyramid that has a base area of 18 square meters and height of 4 meters? So once again, class, we can write down the given for us to be guided. So our given, we have base area or the area of the base is equal to 18 square meters. And then we have given height that is 4 meters. And then let's have the illustration. So let's draw a rectangular pyramid. 
Alright, so once again, we have given height. That is 4 meters. So our given height, that would be 4 meters. So this is 4 meters for the height. And then we have given base area. So the area of the base, this rectangle. So once again, test, we have given base area or area of this rectangle. That would be 18 square meters. So this is 18 square meters. Therefore, class, we can use the first formula because we have given base area and then we have given height. Alright, so let's use the first formula. So volume is equal to one-third area of the base times the height. So simply copy one-third area of the base. There would be 18 square meters. So 18 square meters multiplied by the height, that is 4 meters. Alright, and then simply multiply this one. 1 times 18 times 4. We can ignore 1 class because 1 times 18 is still 18. So we simply multiply 18 and 4. And then we can put over 1 class. That's okay because any number there is understood denominator of 1. So we can put over 1 here. That's okay. And then simply multiply this 1. So 18 times 4. So 18 times 4. That would be 72. And then meters squared times meters. That would be cubic meters. Question, why is that sir? Because meters squared times meters, understood class for this meter, there is an exponent of 1. If you're multiplying same base, same units, copy the base, copy the units, and then you add the exponent, 2 plus 1. So that's why you have cubic meters. Meters raised to the power of 3, and that would be cubic meters. So I hope class is clear for you. Meters squared times meters, the answer is cubic meters because understood that there's exponent of 1 here for the meters. Same base, same units, copy the units, meters, and then add exponent. 2 plus 1, that is 3. Alright, and then divide 3. Why is it 3, sir? Because 3 times 1 times 1, that's still 3. So divide by 3. So multiply the denominators, you will get the same answer, that is 3. And then simply divide this 1 class, and then you're all set. 72 divided by 3, the answer is 24. So therefore, the volume is equals to 24 cubic meters. That's it, plus. That's the answer for number 2, plus. Easy as that, plus. All set for example number 2. Alright, so let's have another example, class. What if you're told to find the height? So let's try example number 3, class. Finding the height. Work on example number 3. Determine the height of a rectangular pyramid whose base area is 120 square feet and the volume is 360 cubic feet. So once again, class, first step, you write down the given for you to be guided. So our given, we have given base area or area of the base. So the base area is equal to 120 square feet. And then we have given volume. Volume is equal to 360 cubic feet. Alright, and then we can have the illustration. So let's have the illustration. Alright, so let's throw this one. Alright, so once again, class, we have given area of the base. So we have given this area of the base. Alright, so our base area, that's 120 square feet. So this is 120 square feet. And then we're told to find this one, class, the height. So we don't have the value of the height. So we're told to find this one, class, the height. We're told to find the height. Alright, and then we have given volume. The volume of this given pyramid, that would be 360 cubic feet. And we're told to find the height. So therefore, class, we will be using the first formula because we have given volume. And then we have given base area. And then we're told to find the height. So we will be using the first formula. Alright, so let's use this one. So volume is equal to one-third base area, and then the height. Now, you'll be asking question, Sir, why do we need to use the first formula instead of second formula? We cannot use this one class because we don't have the length, we don't have the width. So, we don't have the length, we don't have the width. Okay, and we don't have the height. So, therefore, we need to use the first formula because we have the area of the base, we have the volume, and then we don't have the height. We only have one unknown, so therefore, we will be using the first formula. Alright, so simply substitute the given volume. We have 360 cubic feet. 
So the volume that's 360 cubic feet. So that would be cubic feet equals copy one third base area that would be 120 square feet. So this is 120 square feet. Once again, that's multiplication area of the base times the height and then multiplied by the height. All right, so this will be 360 cubic feet. Copy this one. And then you multiply class the numerator. So 1 times 120. Once again, class, we can put over 1 here for us not to be confused. Understood that any number, there is a denominator of 1. We can put over 1. So simply multiply the numerators. 1 times 120. That would be 120 times feet squared. So simply copy this one. This will be 120 square feet and then times height copy h once again plus i hope you're not confused with us. one times 120 that's 120 copy feet square and then copy height copy h all right and then the denominator three times one that is three and then check can we divide 120 by three yep 120 divided by three that is 40. so let's double check 120 divide three that would be 40. So copy 360 cubic feet equals 120 divided by 3. That is 40. Then copy feet square. Copy H. Alright. And then last step class. Divide both sides by 40 square feet. And then you're all set. Once again class. Last step. Divide both sides by 40 square feet. 40 square feet. And then we can find the height and then we're all set. Question. Sir, why do we need to divide both sides by 40 square feet? Now we need to divide both sides class by 40 square feet so that we can cancel this out. And the remaining equation on the right of this equal sign will be only h. Once again class, we need to divide this one by 40 square feet so that we can cancel this out. And the remaining equation on the right of this equal sign will be only h. Now, once you divide 40 square feet on the right, you also do that on the left side to make the equation balance. So, that's the thing there, class. So, cancel this out, and the remaining equation will be only h. And then, simply divide this one class, and then you're all set. So, divide, use your calculator, 360, divide 40, and the answer is 9. So, the answer is 9, so we don't have enough space. Okay, the answer is 9. And then cubic feet divided by feet square, that would be feet. Once again, class, if you are dividing, subtract the exponent. Okay, once again, class, if you are dividing, subtract the exponent. So, same unit, feet. So, once again, cubic feet divide square feet. So, same units. If you are dividing, copy the base, copy the units. And then subtract the exponent. That would be 3... Okay, that would be 3 minus 2, and the answer is feet. Feet raised to the power of 1, or feet. So once again, class, I hope you're not confused, class. If you're dividing, same units, copy the units, and then subtract the exponent. 3 minus 2, that's 1. Or we can just simply erase 1. Understood that there's 1 here. 9 feet equals copy H. That's it, class. O set. So therefore, the height is 9 feet. Easy as that, class. 4 number 3. Alright, so let me just write it here. Our height is equals to 9 feet. That's it plus O set for example number 3. Alright, so let's have last example class. Example number 4. Last example class. Alright, so last example class. Example number 4. A paperweight made of glass is sold as a souvenir at a tourist center. The height of the pyramid of the paperweight is 4 inches and its base area is 9 inches square. How much glass in cubic inches is needed to manufacture 200 paper weights? Alright, so let's write down the given test for us to be guided. So our given, we have given height of the pyramid paper weight that is 4 inches. So height is equals to 4 inches. And we have given base area. So base area that would be 9 square inches. Alright, and then we are told how much glass in cubic inches is needed to manufacture 200 paper weights. So we have given 200 paper weights and then we are told to find how much glass in cubic inches. So first thing to do class is we need to get the volume of each one paper weight. Once again class, we find the volume of one paper weight. 
And to find that, we will be using this formula because we have given area and we have given height. Alright, so let's find the volume of one paper weight. So volume is equal to one third, then area of the base times the height. So this will be one third area of the base. There would be nine. Okay, once again, area of the base, nine square inches. So this will be nine square inches. And then the height is four, four inches. Alright, so this will be volume is equal to, so simply multiply 1 times 9, that is 9 times 4, that is 36. And then copy, copy this one, the unit, so inches, and then square inches times inches, that would be cubic inches. What's in this? Square inches times inches, that would be cubic inches. Copy the units, copy inches, and then you add the exponent. So square inches times inches, understood that there's one here. So, copy the base, copy the units, add the exponent, 2 plus 1, that is 3. So, that's why we have cubic inches. And then, divide by 3. So, we can put over 1, that's okay, over 1. So, 3 times 1 is 3, times 1 is 3. Or, simply divide 3. Alright, and then divide this one. So, the volume is equal to 36 divided by 3, that is 12. And then, copy the units, cubic inches. So, therefore, plus the volume of each one paper weight is equivalent to 12 cubic inches and we need to manufacture 200 paper weights so therefore we need to multiply this one all right so therefore class the conversion one paper weight is equivalent to 12 cubic inches all right so therefore what is the volume if we have 200 paper weights so let's convert this one so 200 paper weights and then we convert the conversion that would be one paper weight. So one paper weight is equal to 12 cubic inches. All right. And then simply multiply plus. Once again, guys, if this is paper weight for our given, the unit on the denominator must be also paper weight so that we can cancel this out. And then simply multiply plus 200 times 12. So 200 times 12. The answer is 2,000. So, this will be 2,400 cubic inches. That's it, plus. That's the answer for number 4. Easy as that, plus. Alright, so I hope you learned something new today. If you like this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. You share it to your friends and to your classmates so that we can help more students. Once again, this is Teacher MJ. Have a great day, class. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye.